In this tutorial, I'll show you how to create a glitch LEGO animation inside of After Effects without using any plugins. Let's create a new composition and name it LEGO, then click OK. I'll be using text as LEGO, you can use whatever you like. Select the type tool and go into type glitch, then open the align tab and align the text in the center. Then let's click here to create another composition and name it map. Let's uh, right click new solid and also call it map. Then open the facts and presets tab and search for fractal noise and add this to the map layer. Set noise type to block, contrast to 400, open transform properties and check uniform scaling. Set scale width to 600 and scale height to 50. Then open evolution options. Hold your alt key and click on the random seed stopwatch and then type time asterisk 20. That will make the fractal noise animate over time. And let's go back to project space and create another composition. Now let's name it Glitch, click OK, drag your logo comp here and also the map layer underneath it. You can hide the map layer, then right click new adjustment layer. Let's name this Displace and make sure to put it above the logo and the map comps. Now go to Effects and Presets and search for Displacement Map and add it to the adjustment layer. Then set Displacement Map layer to Map and set both Max Horizontal and Vertical Displacements to 0 Then create keyframes for both. Press U to see those keyframes on the timeline and set max horizontal displacement to 1500. Then move to 15 frames and set those to 0. Then let's move to 1 second exactly. Create keyframes for both horizontal and vertical displacements. Then move 3 frames forward to by pressing page down and change out the values randomly. Don't have to follow any rules here, just go for something that looks good. Then move three frames forward and do the same, just give it a bit more variation, just change up the directions. Then go three frames forward and set both horizontal and vertical displacements to zero to stop the glitch. Now let's select all of the keyframes we have created, right click and select toggle hold keyframes. That way we have a more controlled glitch. So we've created one displacement point, let's now select these keyframes, press Ctrl C and go to 1 second 20 frames, press Ctrl V to paste these keyframes. Then move to 2 seconds 10 frames and press Ctrl V again. And let's move to 3 seconds, press Ctrl V again. Then go to 3 seconds 15 frames and press N to bring in the composition endpoint so we can better focus on this part. Now all of our displacement points are the same and we want to create some variation. Let's move on to the individual keyframes and change up the values randomly. As you can see I'm going to the max horizontal and vertical displacement point and changing other values to something that looks different from previous frames. You get the idea here, I'm going to speed up the process so you don't have to wait. Once you've adjusted the displacement values, let's go ahead and create the RGB split that I've shown a couple times in my previous tutorials. Let's search for shift channels in effects and presets, add it to the logo comp, leave take red from red. Set take green from full off, take blue from full off, then select the logo comp, press Ctrl D, duplicate it, set red to full off, green to green, duplicate it again, set green to full off and bring back the blue by selecting blue. Now we need the mode column, if you don't see it, click on the toggle switch modes until you see it, and then select top two logo comps and set their mode to screen. Now select the displacement adjustment layer. Press U on your keyboard to bring out those keyframes. Then let's select the logo comp at the bottom, the one that has a red channel. Press P for position. Then go to the beginning of the timeline. Create a keyframe for position and change out the value slightly. Just no, don't change it too much. And to do that, then go to 15 frames and set it to, or actually right click on it and select reset to set it back to normal. Now let's go to the first keyframe on our displacement adjustment layer and create a keyframe for position at the default value. Let's move the uh, three frames forward as we did before and change up the value slightly. Now remember, don't, don't change it too much. Go for something that looks good. Then go to the last keyframe of the stack, copy the first keyframe at the default value and press Ctrl V to paste it at the end. Then select the three keyframes, move the playhead to the next stack and press Ctrl V to paste the position keyframes and do the same for the rest of the stacks. And using the same approach, you can go ahead to the individual keyframes for position and adjust the position to give it more variation. And after you're done adjusting them, select all of the keyframes, right click any of them and select toggle hold keyframes. And that's what we have at the moment. Let's now select all the logo comps. Press T on your keyboard to bring up opacity, create keyframes at 100% at 15 frames. 
and then go back to the beginning of the timeline and set the value to zero so we have a nice reveal from nothing. Now let's create a new adjustment layer by right click new adjustment layer and let's name it effects. Go to effects and presets and search for bad TV. Select the second preset, add this to the effects adjustment layer. Set wave height to 4 and weight width to 4 for the wave warp. Now this will add a nice texture on our logo or the text. Let's do one full preview. Then select all layers, right click and select pre-compose. We can call this animation. Then click OK. And select the animation layer and press Ctrl D to duplicate it. And rename the bottom one to reflection. Then right click on it. Go to transform and select flip vertical. And drag it down quite a bit. Then press T for opacity, set opacity to 75%. Then go to effects and presets tab and search for fast box blur. Add this to the reflection layer. Set blur dimensions to vertical. And set blur radius to maybe 30 or 35. Then let's create a new solid by right click in the empty space. New solid. Now let's name this floor. Click OK. We need to make our floor 3D. So click on the toggle switch mode and make it 3D by clicking here. Then go to effects and presets and search for fractal noise and add this to the floor layer. Let's press R for rotation and set X rotation to minus 90. Then drag the Z handle and place the floor a bit down. Then search for motion tile and effects and presets and add this to the floor layer. Check mirror edges and increase the output width and height to something that covers up the bottom part of the screen. Now let's adjust the fractal noise pattern. Go to noise type, set it to block. Contrast 200. Then place the floor below other layers. Right click on it and select pre-compose. Then you can hide the floor and make sure to check the collapse transformation button. Then right click new camera, select the 28 millimeter camera. Make sure enable depth of field is not selected. Click OK. Let's make both animation and reflection layers 3D. Then let's right click in the empty space, new adjustment layer and search for compound blur in effects and presets. Add this to the adjustment layer and make sure to place the adjustment layer between animation and reflection layers. Then set blur layer to floor and increase the maximum blur so the more you go the more texture you see. I'm going to set mine to 50. Then let's search for sharpen in effects and presets. Add this to the adjustment layer and set amount to 100 so that will improve the texture of our floor. Let's now create a zoom out effect. For that, let's animate the camera. Select the camera and press P for position. I go to the beginning of the timeline and set Z position to minus 500. And also click the stopwatch to create a keyframe. Then go to the end of the composition in our case and set this to minus 1500. Select the keyframes, right click at any of them. Keyframe assistant, easy ease. Then go to the graph editor. If your graph does not look like this, make sure you right click and you're at in edit speed graph. Then select this point, drag the handle to the left all the way. And this one as well, all the way to the left. That will give us a snappy and smooth zoom out effect as you can see. Let's now create a background by right click new solid. Let's call this BG, click OK and drag it to the bottom. And go to effects and presets and search for gradient ramp. Add this to the BG layer. Let's set both colors to black for now. Select the start color. I'm going to choose like a really dark blue. Also set ramp scatter to 100 to minimize the amount of color banding. I <laughs> like to say that. Let's exit the graph editor and see this with a background on. And once you're happy how this looks, we can select all the layers here and right click, select pre-compose. We can call this final, then click OK. Then let's right click in the empty space, new adjustment layer. Let's go to effects and presets and search for direction and blur. Add this to the adjustment layer, set direction to 90 degrees, blur length to 600. Then let's click on the toggle switch mode and select the mode of the adjustment layer to lighten. Then press T for opacity and set opacity to 30%. That'll give our logo a light race effect, which looks cool in my opinion. And the beautiful part about this is, as always, it's completely procedural. That means if we go back to the logo comp, and track the logo like any logo. I like to use the Instagram logo for some reason. Hide the previous logo or text, adjust the position of the current one so it's not too big. Uh, we go back to the glitch comp. You can see that it all updated in real time. It'll be a bit slow though, but you don't have to do any adjustments anymore. Like it automatically adjusts and the glitch effect is applied. And it does not matter what text or what logo you put in here. 
this effect will work regardless. And that brings us to the end of this tutorial. If you learned something new and enjoyed this video, please give this video a thumbs up. That would help me out a lot. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in the next video. Until then, peace out.